Hey, welcome again to another time sticking YouTube video. Today we're going to be talking about the growing trend in younger people not being able to read traditional analog clock faces. So stick with us through this intro and we're going to have a look at the subject with you. Now as we tick off the years of our lives, the common phrase, what are they teaching you in school these days, seems to be coming out more frequently, almost by the day, especially considering that everything's becoming more digitized. In terms of horology, there's one particular schoolhouse lesson that's going by the wayside, reading an analog clock face. With UK schools outright ditching these aging timekeepers, and US schools facing their own woes, it could very well be that the analog clock makes its way out of core curriculums around the world, permanently. Although this may be troublesome to many, it's really no surprise that this is the trend. The new generation of college-age adults worried about global economics, computational industries, and a social media inundated age of information, it seems strange to have an expectation for both students and educators to add this skill to their agendas. On the other hand, it is a skill that can teach kids how to do fast mental math and think critically about clock faces when they see them in the world. As there's sure to be a debate about the relative value of this skill in the future, there are already examples of this trend away from analog in our day-to-day -day lives. Two examples of this growing trend were presented on Jimmy Kimmel Live of all places over the last year. In his segment titled What Time Is It, which aired in May of 2018, and its follow-up, Can You Do It, in May of 2019, Jimmy sent a film crew to ask young people if they could read analog clocks. What Time Is It featured children, presumably around elementary and middle school age, trying to answer this clock-oriented question. The segment, as Jimmy's monologue suggests, was in response to the UK deciding to move away from analog timekeeping in schools. Most of the kiddos in What Time Is It sketch got it wrong, but one particular youngster got it right and received a Flavor Flav style clock necklace as a prize. In the follow-up, Can You Do It?, the poll group was a bit older, about high school to college aged adults. This particular segment had some folks throwing up their hands in disbelief, figuratively, at the responses young adults gave on the streets about analog time. One standout moment is when a young woman says that she hopes her professors don't see the show, because she doesn't want them to know that she hasn't had to read a clock like that since grade school. Another aspect of younger people not reading analog clocks has to do with some of the more old world implications in analog timekeeping. Indeed, an element to analog clock reading that can be presumably difficult is the hands themselves. It seems that it has nothing to do with the Hindu Arabic numerals or digits positioned on the dial. The interpretation of the hands alongside the numbers we're all used to seeing on phones, computers, and digital watches is what's baffling for new time-telling youth based on responses from younger people. After all, it does take some coaching to combine all of the elements of an analog clock. Teaching that sort of knowledge takes up valuable time in the classroom. Combined with this reality, the time system that our 12-hour AM-PM split is based on has more to do with Egyptian obelisks than any daily meeting or appointment in today's age. Historically, all of the elements of an analog clock are so ancient, it's no surprise that current interpretations are moving beyond this increasingly classic form of time-telling. In that vein, here's a rhetorical question. When was the last time you had to use an abacus in math class? That question aside, there are a lot of real values still to reading analog time that are based in real-world application. Unlike cursive, abacuses, VHS tapes, and etc., there is still an existing element of utility to analog timekeeping that a lot of educators see. To be noted, a lot of the information out on this aspect of the subject is still anecdotal. However, a few national publications, including USA Today, cite teachers who see a problem-solving and mathematical value to the continued teaching of analog time-telling. It does hold some logic to make this a part of both tradition and focused thinking and problem-solving, at the very least for the time being. In general, exam times are becoming more stressful for children. These kids, whether we realize it or not, are being fed digital time from ours and our parents' generation making analog time seem more and more alien in the classroom. On top of this, testing has become the norm for education instead of a fully rounded curriculum, which is having new effects on the psyche of children as they grow and mature. This has some people begging the question, who has time for old-fashioned time-telling in the classroom these days? As it stands, the UK, home of Big Bend, 
asked that question and has acted on it already. And U.S. schools are starting to ask the question themselves, although many are beginning to answer with, let's continue to teach it, for certain uh, intellectual reasons. As a watch and clock oriented business, we deal with a wide age range of folks. When younger people interact with our business, sometimes they ask us, why should I wear it? I can't even read it anyway. Even though this happens, modern workplaces and the adult world that these younger people are entering still operate on certain traditions and time telling. Thus, these younger people are still picking up analog watches, often with minimalist styles, uh, usually for more appearances above anything else. It seems that the priority is less on traditionally preferred dials and education to make room for modern information. This doesn't change the bittersweet reality of the nature of technological change. As timekeeping moves into the 21st century with atomic time, digital time, and smartwatch capability, it will be interesting to see what quote-unquote old world tech holds up in teaching. For now, outside of the classroom, it's really good to see that a lot of folks are keeping up with analog watches and clocks. Keeping them maintained retains their value quite highly, especially since trends are moving away from this traditional time telling. And as the future generation leads us into the next century, hopefully they will take our favorite horological devices and at least put them in a museum, not a mausoleum. What are your thoughts on the subject? We'd really like to hear from you, so leave us a comment below. Hello, and thanks for watching our YouTube video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and you can find similar videos right here. For more new and interesting content from Time Sticking on our channel, please subscribe at the link here. And for more information about wristwatch repair and watch maintenance generally, you can find us at timesticking.com. Thanks so much, and have a great day.